it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and day two in Fountain Valley. So, I screwed up. Well, I didn't really screw up, but um, before Caesar got here from Sun Valley Nursery yesterday, I was bored, so I went ahead and did this little cutout. And then when my plants came from Caesar, I realized that that little pack of podium lamaria, I just wasn't gonna cut it against the weight of these beautiful specimen plants that Caesar brought. I want to do the alobanzii in this spot right here. There is no competition with wires. We're in no danger of it affecting or interfering with the house. It's the perfect place. And this will give us balance in the overall design. I've got my Palo Verde Desert Museum as per the client's request. I know I'm always, you know, no trees, no trees, no trees. But this is a desert tree. It is very, very drought tolerant. It's absolutely beautiful. And I've managed their expectations. They know that it's gonna drop yellow flowers in the spring. Um, but we are also going to be doing uh, Cali, Cali Gold, California Gold um, top dressing rock. And I'm just going to be accenting with a little bit of burgundy here and there. So that'll be fine. I will find a new home for this Pacapodium lamarii. Nope, problemo. I got Gordon over here laying weed barrier fabric. This is gonna be, you know, our stream bed where we're gonna have all of our river rock and you definitely wanna lay fabric before you rock your stream bed uh, because over time the rock will sink into the dirt if you don't and you are not going like that. So lay out your fabric first. Look at this aloe Hercules. Go stand next to it. Oh my goodness. I'm in love. So gorgeous, thank you, Caesar. Um, I also did a little bit of retention with my dry stack right in here. Uh, I did that this morning. These boulders are not all staged yet. We're just starting to finish up with our boulder placement while we were waiting for Caesar to arrive with the plants. So that's gonna be, you know, this is still in process here. So the, after lunch, we're going to continue with plant staging and sinking, we're gonna continue working in the dry stream. We have so much work to do in here still with, you know, shoring up areas with uh, rubble. I mean, it's just, it's all in the details, people. The more time you put into it, the better it's gonna look in the end. Over here, we've got the guys, they've kicked the Bainzii, which is already split. It's got two heads, it's so fantastic. Um, they're digging out the hole for that. We're gonna take a shovel and we're gonna kick off, well, I don't even really need a shovel, um, and kick off a lot of this extra soil. We just don't need all of this at all. We can get it right down basically to the roots. You will notice that there's a little bit of fungal damage on these older leaves. This is not a problem. I will be treating this in maintenance um, systemically and prophylactically probably in the spring and the fall to avoid new damage but you can see that the new leaves up top are free and clear of any of any um, fungus so that's really all that matters we just and have to love our scars people yeah we gotta love our scars and I mean it's interesting I love you know I love the little bit of variegation on this yeah. plant too um, it's just a really really exceptional specimen yeah, you know, every garden needs one, right? Um, this is a uh, San Pedro cactus, and um, every garden needs a phallus, so I picked this one out myself. I've got Pilosoceros azurus. I've got some beautiful blue flame agaves. I've got a wonderful selection of mangaves. And look at my luciase. Look at how the sun is just beating through those. This is just such a phenomenal selection. I've got some beautiful, beautiful things to work with. I'm really excited about this trio of perii too. They are all different varieties. So I've got three different perii to work with. I've got a, one of the most gorgeous blue glows I've ever laid my eyes upon. Um, I've got this fantastic mammillaria from Caesar here too. Look at that, isn't that spectacular? Oh yeah, let's come over and take a look at the guys. You'll see, you know, it came in that great big 24 inch box, 
But we don't need all that. We just, what can I do? I think uh, they've got it, Hannah. Yeah. All right, then. I will suggest that you give it a quarter turn toward me. Whoop, yes. Very nice. See, now see those two pom-poms are, are right here. That's exactly the way I want it. Now what we'll do is we'll start backfilling the plant. Um, it looks really, really straight, but you'll be able to look and, you know, step back and we'll make some adjustments as needed. But yes, I'm much happier with this. That little pack of podium was just too small. We will work it into a really adorable spot somewhere else in the landscape. So we are wrapping up day two in Fountain Valley and what tremendous progress we are making. Um, you know, despite the fact that we had 10 yards of soil, we did have to go get an extra half a yard. <laughs> it never fails, but I needed some height back here next to the house. The house is also going to be painted um, soon, so there's that, which will be very exciting. I'm not going to plant anything right up against it. These plants that you see over here by the tools aren't staged. We just moved them out of the way. There's a shady flower bed around by the front door that I'm going to be doing bromeliads, aeoniums, and some of the little um, apple snap sedums, and maybe some of the calanchoe orgialis, some of the softer stuff because this gets pretty hot here in the summertime. But wow, whoa, 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 right? We've got some things that I don't normally use in this installation, like the blue flame attenuatas. This is like the foxtail or the green version, but it's a little bit bigger and a little showier and a little bluer. So it's like the next step up from, from the foxtail and it's called a blue flame. Uh, these aloe vera, you know, I talk about aloe vera as being an often maligned plant. It's common, but it's so beautiful as a single specimen. And look at that beautiful bloom that it's getting on it. The aloe hercules is stunning. I planted an aloe cameronii underneath it. You know, remember this is the red aloe that I like to use as a cutting. And that's what I did. I, it came in a 15 gallon can and I just, I just cut it off because I want this to turn red. And this is another bush aloe. It, it has a, you know, its pattern of growth is to, is to spread. And I don't necessarily want it to do a lot of that. I'm in it more for the shape and for that red, red color. So that's why I use it as a cutting. I'm starting to stage my barrel cactus. You will have to note the Pilosoceros azurus, the blue, um, columnular cactus that I just adore so much. We did find a home for the Pacopodium lamerii. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic right here. Check out that mangabe. Boom. Which one is that? Do we know? Is that Mission to Mars? Spotty Dottie. That's Spotty Dottie. Okay. I'm loving our Palo Verde Desert Museum, the Dazzlerian longissimum. Oh, look at this blue glow, Hannah. Isn't that so stunning? Yeah. Why don't you show what, you have what a beautiful, beautiful plant. Oh, and then this mammalaria too is new. Isn't this just such a gorgeous little thing? I just love these in, a, in my installations because they do stay so low to the ground and they just continue slowly to spread. Uh, it's just a really, really great low, low profile plant for the edges of your succulent garden. I think tomorrow, we will probably begin working on laying out the pebbles in the dry stream bed. I haven't done that yet because Dad wants to do lights. Yes, um, Greg is in the process of stringing low voltage wire and also installing, uh, he's got a well light here that will just shine directly up on this beautiful Bainsey eye. He's going to do, uh, are you going to do other wells? Two more, right? Yeah on the um, Palo Verde tree and then also on the giant Hercules over there in the corner. And then there are some spotlights too that we're going to include as well. Yes, I planted a little Aeonium Kiwi, a Chaveria harmsii, and just some little, uh, I believe that is a Pachy, uh, Pachyveria, um, just to kind of, you know, soften it up right there. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, we still have some rocks, as you can see, but we're getting down to the bottom of it. We got more soil, but it's the sand. Yes, we got some more what we um, thought was amended topsoil, but it's, and it may be, but it just looks like sand. So Hannah made a little snowman um, because that's what we do here. Uh, but yeah, this, I needed more soil back here. Uh, you can kind of see how the natural pathway is gonna, gonna work. The client doesn't really access this gate that often, but we still wanted to leave that as an option. So this will not be formally, I'm not gonna line it with, with rubble or put flagstones down. This will just be naturally, you'll see. <laughs> How's that, you'll see. So um, tomorrow we are gonna stage more of these boulders and get some more plant material going in here. Uh, you know, we may, we may come, we will definitely come close to finishing the planting tomorrow. So be sure to tune in. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity reporting in Fountain Valley with Team DFS in day two and your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.